welcome to Rodos Indy 5. It's the second week uh, of 2023 and I'm doing this from Spain. And once again in Indy 5, once again we have uh, indeed five different albums, five different styles and all that stuff. And since I'm here in Spain, nothing to unbox. I'm just using a band sides for backdrop and I hope I can guide you through some interesting music for the better or worse. First we'll go to Spain in fact and this is pure coincidence because I was actually listening to this band when I was traveling here with a car so it's not like this was planned but here it is the first band is indeed from Spain and this is a rather new band from Catalonia area founded in 2018 and only one release out and it's an EP called Hathazard Ethos. Uh, this is a curious one because it doesn't really sound anything else but Nordic black metal. Running for some 27 minutes with the four tracks is very very dark uh, black metal in the very traditional ways. And if I had to mention one name above all, which of this remind me, um, it would be Vatain from Sweden. So this is de definitely very very Nordic style of uh, black metal and uh, Nothing here indicates any kind of originality or groundbreaking styles, but that doesn't really matter so much because the music is actually quite good. The atmosphere is top-notch and the vocals and the production is something that supports the music well. And the music is indeed very very much uh, something on the verge of end of second wave of black metal and on the more modern styles of doing that kind of stuff. So it's pretty much basic black metal for people who are expecting to listen black metal in 2020s. Nothing here really indicates any kind of uh, um, originality in the sense of like this band is going some new directions or all that stuff. Once you heard a few albums from 2000s black metal you pretty much know what to expect and this is in that sense in the kind of a safe zone. But the good thing here is, because of its rather sinister and dark feeling, it's somewhat enjoyable. Now the only downside is, it could be more catchier and memorable. But if all that you really need is some kind of a basic offering of black metal with the kind of a atmosphere you're looking for, and you don't mind that fatine like of a feeling, then this is something that you should totally keep your ears peeled for. Uh, as originally, this was released on an independent digital release, but later on it was picked up by Signal Rex, which released this on CD and vinyl. So in case you're one of those who like physical copies much like me, give it a go and you might find the album in your local distribution. The next band is not metal at all, which explains why this is not on uh, Metal Archives backdrop site here. Uh, Dead's, Dead Space Chamber Music is an interesting name and kind of a fitting for this kind of stuff. And the album of the hour is The Black Hours. Uh, this is something different uh, coming from UK and I want to show you what I mean. If you look at the tags here, you will find alternative, uh, ritual ambient, neoclassical, uh, neo-folk and beyond of that stuff. Experimental and dark and doom. And I think especially the ones that here, neo-folk neo and neo-classical are the ones that kind of put you in the right track when thinking about this music. The thing here with Dead Space uh, chamber music is that it's indeed a kind of a combination of various elements. There are parts where it gets all instrumental and uh, things are definitely more kind of uh, ritualistic. There are parts where it gets folkier and there are parts where it gets more kind of neoclassical. So it's more like a soundtrack in a way, having varied themes and um, going into different directions with the music. There are haunting female vocals for instance and then there are traditional instruments and it kind of bounces up and forth, up and down, back and forth with the different kind of themes. But because of this big diversity, it's definitely not for everybody. I mean, it's very, very diverse in the sense of how the atmosphere is built. And uh, as such, it's hard to recommend for this, you know, the average listener. However, if you're some, something or someone who is looking for something different, something that you don't hear every day, you're looking for an experience that it's going to speak you in different languages. This is exactly what you're looking for. I'm not going to say it's a 
exactly a good album because it's like too much all over the place but at the same time it definitely keeps you you know interested it's not a boring one because there's so much different different patterns or paths to get along so it's interesting but if you like I said if you consider it kind of a soundtrack um, experience then it might work for you definitely worth checking out if you're looking for something out of ordinary then we have this band that kind of got me going with the first song of the album this band is get some and um, this is the debut album of the band now I was first wondering why this isn't on metal archives because it kind of starts with the trash metal ways that is after the intro which is I guess taken from a war movie the first song is actually good but as that one is pretty much done with you're moving more and more closer to kind of hardcore hence this is not on metal archives and I could only find find this uh, Facebook page for the band so there's not much information of course it's available on streaming services and all that stuff so there are more stuff like that but for information I guess this Facebook page is pretty much the only thing so bad news for people like you who, who might not be interested in uh, or using Facebook because that's the source for this kind of bad. Like I said the first track is the one that makes the most impact and then it starts a little bit of a decline. The problem with this album is it's not really that much aggression and energy that I'm looking for for a hardcore band nor it is as metallic as I was hoping based on the first track. So it's instead of picking like the best of both worlds that is hardcore and trash metal it's actually avoiding both extremities and in my opinion it's one of those in-betweener albums it's not exactly good enough for metal not good enough for hardcore but kind of a diluted version of both of these that's not to say this is a bad album but it's kind of a lukewarmish because it doesn't really deliver those blows in a way I was expecting or hoping so there are moments when this band kind of you know works I mean the grunting vocals are pretty okay the production is right there but the songwriting is leaving me a little bit cold that is I just don't get the energy the band is trying to you know deal and as such it's a tiny bit of a disappointment that is after the first track which is once again a good one but if you're looking for some trashy hardcore maybe get some is worth your time third band on this list is unfortunately probably the worst one this comes from um, Idaho United States and it's labeled here on metal archives as blackened doom metal mind you this has absolutely very very little to do with the traditional doom metal you know the kind of epic clean vocals and all that stuff this is more like doom death with a blackened twist that is their pointers like vocals and maybe some riffs which are closer to black metallic as far as this goes for traditional doom metal, I'm talking about the debut album Loss of Light here, of course. Um, it's not really that much of a album. I don't know what's the problem with networking, not loading. So let's just deal with the main page here. The problem with the album is it's made of very, very lengthy tracks and they are not leading you anywhere. Not with color waves, not chorus parts, not with the cool kind of atmosphere the production is quite crappy and the vocals are not exactly good now one of my favorite things with doom metal which is a hard kind of a genre for me to like to begin with is when you have absolutely outstanding great vocal work that saves so many bands which are bored because I mean they have slow tempo are not energetic are not memorable with riffs and all that stuff and have those 15 minute songs now if you remove interesting vocals from that equation what is left a lot of boredness and that's the problem with loss of light as well because it doesn't have good production or good songwriting or good vocals I feel it's kind of a diluted version of doom dead with some black metal to go with and that's the main problem for me however if you are on contrary to my opinion liking all these elements then this is something you might have interest in so check it out if you think this is your cup of tea um, the album is out since 2021 digital physical at least cd and tape so give it a go if you think it's worth your time last but not definitely not least is in my opinion maybe the best album on this pile or actually ep this one is under the church from sweden or nowadays more like icelandic areas 
and this is EP called Total Burial. Now, before we get to talk about the actual band here, what is worth mentioning is, I don't think this is, by the way, going to reload. Um, thing here is, there was a band called Nirvana 2002. Originally, it was Nirvana, and this is 1988, before Nirvana, the grunge band by Kurt Cobain and the folks, uh, came out. So they had the band called Nirvana doing death metal in the late 80s. That is roughly the same era when Dismember and Entombed and other old school Swedish death metal bands were right there. So they, they did a demo or two, and before they could do um, you know album or anything like that, Nirvana from Seattle, United States, made an album. So they were kind of bound to change the name, and it might sound silly. Nirvana 2002, but if you check out the story, for example, on Metal Archives, it will make sense to you, and that's all explained there. However, the band never put out an album, but more like split up and the band members went into different bands. However, in 2012, uh, the band called Under the Church was formed, and basically it picks up from the, you know, shrapnel, so whatever pieces Nirvana 2002 had left, and that is old school death metal. And now after 10 years, they have like two albums out and these single splits EPs. And Total Burial is basically like sending you back to early 90s of Swedish death metal. I mean, it has the Entombed and Entombed AD kind of a death metal and death and roll feeling, but probably done better than most of the Entombed or Entombed AD ever did. I mean, the songs are simple and sweet, 15 minutes, five tracks, so it's like straight to the point with a lot of impact, good crawler vocals and good production. It could be a lot more memorable and catchier, so it's not exactly a great album, but it's definitely on the side of good things. So in my opinion, Total Burial definitely deserves your attention if you're into old school death metal to begin with, that is of Swedish style, Icelandic nowadays or not. So there's this. Five different releases, five different styles, so pick one of your favorites, and if you didn't find anything worthwhile checking out, then move on and more reviews coming your way. And all these bands with their respective links are in the description box, so check them out, and I hope you like some of the material presented, and if you want to let me know what's your favorite, please put it in the comment section, and I'll get back to you. See you soon with more reviews coming your way, as always.